The movie was incredible. It was jumping, just had me, you know, rocking on my seat, you know. It was an experience of a lifetime. It was cute. It was way cute. I loved it. It was brilliant. It was really good. I recommend it. It's a tear jerker. I think everybody should see this movie. Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new episode of Real Reactions. I'm Jackie Tiongson, and I'm sitting here with the talented director, James Gunn, to talk a little bit about his new movie, Super. All it takes to be a superhero is the choice to fight evil. Shut up, crime. Don't steal. Don't deal drugs. Don't molest kids. So, first of all... Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You got a stack of cards there. Yes. I just want to say, first, congratulations on the movie. I thought it was super. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I loved it so much. Um, the movie, for those who don't know, is about a man named Frank, Frank. who mm -hmm. has nothing going on for him in his life, and he believes he hears a message from God telling him to fight evil, yes. and thus his superhero alter ego, Crimson Bolt, is formed. Yes, that's right. Yes. So how did you first come up with the idea to create this film? Well, I originally wrote this screenplay back in 2002. Mm -hmm. um, I was writing it as a short film, and it just sort of grew and grew and grew, and I, I sort of fell in love with the characters, especially Frank and Libby, who ends up being played by uh, Ellen Page in the movie. And um, they're just a wonderful couple of uh, psychopaths, and uh, I like their adventures. And speaking of Frank, he's a one-of-a-kind character. He's always doing the right thing to the end, even if nothing's going his way. What inspired you to create a character like Frank? I don't know. I think Frank's a lot like me, actually. I think of Frank as my inner child. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a big, you know, I, I may seem like I, you know, I'm okay on the outside. I, I speak all right. I do all right. But in the inside, I feel like a big lummox like Frank oh. and uh, very awkward. And so Frank is, it super is my story, mm -hmm. actually. It's an autobiography. The term self-reflexive superhero yeah. is used a lot to describe Frank. Can you tell us in your terms what that means exactly? You know, what it really is, 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 you know, this is a story about a guy who tries to become a superhero and what it would be like if it really happened. It's a extremely gritty film, very violent, very dark. And it's, it's a dramatic film in a lot of ways. It, 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 it's, we don't shy away from anything. We don't pull any punches. It's a very extreme film. And it is like perhaps the seedy underbelly of the regular superhero movie you might see as a desire man or dark knight. You just sit here and wait for crime to happen? That's right. <sighs> this is so boring. Yes, I can tell you now it's the kid. You're supposed to kill him. I'm just learning. You have to teach me these things. I did realize that you had some difficulty casting the lead of Frank. I did. What was it about Rain Wilson that just made you know he was perfect for this role? Well, I, you know, for, for the character of Frank, I needed somebody who could, you know, handle the dramatic part of the film, who could dra handle the comedic part of the film, who was a big enough goofball that you could imagine that he's the guy that's being picked on by his fellow short order cook at the diner, yet he's also a guy who's big enough and threatening enough that you can imagine him kicking ass at the uh, end of the film. And um, for years and years, I had financing for Super originally back in 2004, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find the right person to fit that role. And about two years ago, my ex-wife, Jenna Fisher, called me up and said, what are you doing with that script, Super? I really love that script. I want to see you make that movie. And I said, I don't know. It's a little dark. It's a little esoteric. I'm not sure we can get the funding for it. And also, I can't find anybody to play Frank. And she said, well, have you ever thought of Rain? And I knew Rain for maybe five years or so. And I was like, wow, that's, that, that works. That was perfect. And so I sent the screenplay to Rain uh, through email. And he texted me an hour and a half later. He says, I'm 22 pages in. My hands are trembling. I want to do this movie no matter what. And like you said, Rain Wilson is mostly known for his emotionless character as Dwight on The Office. Yeah. However, in Super, there's a really vulnerable scene. Um, he's crying over a bed, just begging God for his wife back. Yeah. Was it ever difficult for you to direct your actors in a way that they're not normally portrayed? Yeah, it was difficult with Rain because Rain is a really like terrible actor. And, um, <laughs> everything that he does in this movie, he did because of me. No, <laughs> Rain is great, and it, no, it was never diff it was never difficult directing the actors. I had an amazing cast, and uh -huh. I was very happy with them. They were all very gung ho. 
You know, as a director, it, it's really about knowing when you need to steer somebody in a little bit of a different direction or you need to, to bring out something new in them and when you need to stand back and let them shine. And it's really about knowing when to do all of those things at different moments. And I think that's what it was about with Rain. And that moment that you're talking about when he's praying near the beginning of the film, that's when I knew that Rain was really just could handle this so well because he did show that vulnerability. And the scene is also, it's, it's a very, it's a mixture of a very, very heartbreaking, sad scene. And it's also funny at the same time. And to be able to handle that tonally um, was a difficult thing for an actor. And watching it, I just felt like I was there with him experiencing it. And I, I was there with him. I was actually, <laughs> he's on the bed right here, and I'm literally right here next to him with my little clamshell uh, you know, monitor watching everything he does. It was a great experience. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite moments in the, making the movie. I knew I was losing her. Excuse me. Have you seen my wife? I don't think she wants to see you anymore. What? Sarah! Don't touch my car again. I'm going. That's not the kind of touching I meant. And this movie has a lot of comedy, romance, but also a lot of action in it. Did all the actors perform their own stunts? No. No? No. Uh, but I'll tell you who's the most uh, athletic is Ellen Page. Uh, she is the best. We have a scene in which she throws a bomb about 30 feet away to blow up a bad guy. And uh, we actually had her throw the bomb and there was a little red X on the ground like this. And we did it twice. She threw it twice. And both times she actually hit that little red X. Oh, wow. So she was amazing. She's much more athletic than Rain Wilson. And speaking of Ellen Page, I heard that she fainted during one of her scenes. Could you tell us a little bit well, about that? Well, she didn't that? totally faint. She almost fainted. Okay. It was, there's a scene in which she comes in and she jumps around to, to prove to Frank that she's very athletic and worthy of being his kid sidekick. Mm -hmm. And so she rolls around and somersaults and all that. And we shot this maybe three times in a row. It was three o'clock in the morning, no, four o'clock in the morning. It was her like second day on set. She was used to a totally different time schedule. And at the end of the scene, she has to read off this list of possible names for her sidekick. And as she's reading it, she just started doing this thing and like passing out oh, no. and we, we stopped her. And um, for this film, going back to the budget, you had a $2 million budget and you shot the entire movie in 24 days, yeah. which is such an accomplishment. Yeah. How were you able to make everything come together? It's really about planning. You know, it, it's, um, I, I really think that, you know, you do make a movie before you ever set foot on, on, on set. And, um, it's, uh, most movies you do between 12 and 20 camera setups a day. On this movie, we did between 45 and 54 camera setups every day. So we're moving very, very, very quickly. The director of photography, Steve Gaynor, and the assistant director and I had everything choreographed so that we could move quickly every day and know exactly what we were going to do ahead of time. And that's the way we got it done. So the movie you see on screen is exactly the movie that I had in my head. So I, it's only me to blame if you don't want to. <laughs> you must feel so accomplished, though, with your final project. I feel happy, you know, it's like I've made a lot of movies and um, this is the movie that I wanted to make. And I saw your website. I loved the closeness that you have with your fans. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel it's important to have that constant communication? I, I don't know if it is important to have constant communication, but I'm always doing something and it doesn't take that much to, you know, tweet or do stuff on Facebook or whatever. That's great. And do you feel that your fans bring anything to the table for you as a filmmaker? Um, yeah, I mean, I think they, they, my fans inspire me all the time. I mean, some of my fans are extremely funny people, and I've met people uh, who are fans who have then later become involved and, and worked with me or done things like that. So, yeah, I have a lot of really cool people out there who, you know, I, I talk to via Twitter. And lastly, do you have any advice for aspiring filmmakers, screenwriters? Find out what you're good at. Do a real exploration into what you like doing and what you're good at, and then follow that. And then once you know what that is, key into it and don't stop and keep going, you know? Um, but I, I don't believe that happiness comes from achieving your dreams. I think happiness comes from doing what you're good at and sharing that with the community. And so I, I think that that's the main thing, is find out what your gifts are. Every person has a gift. Mm -hmm. Every person has a superpower. Everybody. And, um, and, and find out what that is and then follow it till, till, till you're blue in the face. This is not about good and evil. This is about she loved me more because I am interesting. Oh.